What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here. Now I'm super excited for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I know there aren't going to be that many newcomers this time around, but there still is the potential for post-launch DLC. And we already have plenty of Nintendo newcomers and Nintendo veterans joining the battle. So I figured why not make a list of the third party characters who could possibly get in. There are a few characters on this list that I really like, but I'll try to be unbiased. I do have legitimate reasons for why I think they could possibly get in. And remember, this is my opinion, so if this doesn't include characters you like, or if you think someone else is getting in for different reasons, let me know your thoughts kindly in the comments section below. I'd love to hear it. And before we get started, let's go over a couple honorable mentions. The first one being Shantae the Half-Genie Hero, and the second one being Sora from Kingdom Hearts, both for having a long history on Nintendo systems and for just being so heavily requested. Sure, there's not much evidence to support they'll get in, but does that really matter? In Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and 3DS, Mega Man managed to get in just by fan demand alone. His franchise was totally dead at the time, so relevancy didn't play into it. But anyways, with the honorable mentions out of the way, let's get started on the list. Number 5 on the list is Banjo and Kazooie. I know, I know, I put them at the bottom of the list, but I honestly just found more reasons for the other fighters. Nevertheless, they do have a very solid chance of getting in. They made their start on the Nintendo 64, and despite being owned by Microsoft now, Phil Spencer says he would love to see them join the battle. Plus, while it only happened in the past month or so, Nintendo and Microsoft have been super buddy-buddy recently. So, who knows? Number 4 is Crash Bandicoot. He was huge back in the day, one of the only to ever rival Mario besides Sonic. He even outsold some of Mario's games. Plus, recently, Crash has made a massive comeback. It even made its way to the Switch this weekend. If there was going to be a Switch port of the Insane Trilogy, Nintendo would have known about it as soon as the game in general began production. And the Insane Trilogy had at least a two-year production cycle. This means it was likely started sometime in 2015, when the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate project plan was still being worked on and finalized. Crash's impact on the gaming world then, his relevancy now, and the convenient timing of the development schedules, he feels closer than ever to getting in. Number 3 is Simon Belmont. Uh, is, is this Simon Belmont? I don't know. I know nothing about Castlevania. See, this is proof I'm not being biased. I don't even know who this is. <laughs> But anyways, the Castlevania franchise has found its popularity on Nintendo systems, and I assume Simon Belmont is the protagonist. He's been a very highly requested character, and there's one big factor that puts him ahead of the two previous fighters on this list. Before Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's reveal, like the day before, there was a leak that revealed tons of info that turned out to be true. All the characters coming back, Ridley's inclusion, etc. And they also stated Simon Belmont would be there. With how true some of the leaked statements turned out to be, we shouldn't doubt Simon too much. Number 2 is Heihachi Mishima from Tekken. He was so close last time. Now Tekken is a series produced by Bandai Namco, who have returned to help develop this Super Smash Bros. installment. They even implemented a mechanic from Tekken into the game called Rage Mode. And the current character in question, Heihachi, even had his own Mi outfit for the Mi Fighter characters. And to go one step further, Heihachi was even considered for the final roster to represent 3D fighting games. But unfortunately, he was cut because Super Smash Bros. series director Masahiro Sakurai found it difficult to implement his playstyle. Now, there are plenty of other Tekken characters who could fit really well in the Super Smash Bros. world. Jin Kazama, for example. With his powers, he'd be more unique than Heihachi. But with Heihachi definitely being the more iconic face of Tekken, and with Sakurai's apparent focus on trying to make fighters who haven't worked before work now, example being Ridley, I say Heihachi is extremely likely to join the battle this time. Number one is none other than Rayman. Let's face it, you all knew this was coming. He had not one, not two, but three trophies related to his franchise in the previous game. Then there was that controversial incident with the fake leak produced by Artsy Omni, which I'm positive boosted his numbers big time in the fighter ballad. Then of course there was the definitive edition of Rayman Legends, which was an exclusive on the Nintendo Switch. And then finally, there's Nintendo's and Ubisoft's super good relationship thanks to Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Now some people think that because of the last point, those Rabbids are more likely to get in than Rayman. But come on guys, Sakurai is smart. He knows what we want. 
Remember all the way back when Pac-Man got in? Did you know that Namco wanted his ghostly adventures design to be the one in Super Smash Bros., but Sakurai threatened to cut him completely if they couldn't use the classic Pac-Man world design? And here we are today with good old classic Pac-Man. If Sakurai wants Rayman in over the rabbits, he's going to make it happen, no matter how hard he'll have to twist Ubisoft's arm. And that's it for this video. I apologize deeply if there was a third-party character you really wanted that didn't show up on this list. Let me know who they are in the comment section below, and how likely you think they are to get in. Leopold the Brave, out.